Say swear to God. You want oh oh you want to see this aliens that you that I saw on my Twitter feed. Honestly, bro, I don't really. I'm I'm all for I I, I would say when I was in high school and read it really wasn't that popular yet. Like the early days of Reddit, I was all in on conspiracy theories. I still love a good conspiracy theory, but now that more people are on the internet, there's more information out there, I feel like somebody's always already able to give like a very thoughtful explanation for anything that I see. Like on Reddit back in the day, everybody would be like sitting in a fucking campfire jerking each other off to these conspiracies. And now it's just like, nope, here's the community notes. That was like a Starship satellite or whatever the fuck it was. Starlink satellite. There's all types of answers now. But what I saw in my timeline this morning from these... And my For You page gives me these conspiracy... Which I don't mind, but... Not every single one of them are believable. I'm like, yo, this account is just clickbaiting. This is just for engagement. What I saw this morning, I'm like, I can't wait for one of you to link me the actual explanation to it, and then I'm going to hate everything about this chat, and it's probably going to ruin my day. But no matter what, we will talk about that, but we're going to get there. Don't worry. Jack Ellis, what's up, brother? Thanks for the prime, man. Dilly AK, I'm Juicebox, and why do you know the valid, to be honest? Thank you, brother. Joe Deceive, Supermax Contract 1. Yo, listen. Although we're just making jokes, we got to stop this trend where my uh, one of our teams wins one match and we're all like, he needs a raise, bro. He Get this man some more money. I'm like, yo, he's just doing what we fucking hoped he would do when we first decided to start paying this guy. Y'all are getting crazy out here. I'm like, hold up now. Wait, so we're paying this guy to lose and as soon as he wins a, a match, we, we want to give him the super max? Nah, 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 nah. Can't be like that, brother. You getting paid to play, you getting paid to win. All right? If they win, that's just what we expected them to do. Only time you get like a raise is if you win us a world championship or a couple majors throughout the week. We ain't talking about that. And even then, all the guys that did that for us, Draza, Octane, Envoy, and Kenny, they would actually argue that we did not even give them raises because we didn't. We couldn't afford it. Oh my God, you see you see that shit? Yo, my fucking ears were burning for you, LaRue. I said it before you could even pipe up because I knew those four motherfuckers would have called me out because it's true. They actually took a... Uh, they didn't... It's not... They did the opposite of a raise. They actually took a pay cut. No bullshit. I said, don't cry, LaRue. It all worked out. 6,000 sub train. You got plenty of cash. It all worked out. You're welcome. Damn, bro, I'm so glad I said that shit because I knew LaRue was just waiting on the other side of this conversation to fucking stick it to me, bro. And then and then, and then, you guys would have said, don't cry, Nate, LaRue got you. Yo, Slayshot, Gollum's Tweed Man, Theo Dog, what up, gentlemen? Thank you very much for the subs. Uh, all right, boys. So we got a busy week this week, all right? Let me run it down for you, gentlemen. I also think me tweeting out a schedule every week could be helpful too, but I've never been one to stick to the fucking confines of a schedule. Basically, I'm saying is I plan something and I don't follow through with it. That's what I mean when I say we're not going to stay on a schedule. M Miguel, good morning. Good morning. Yo, Miguel, we need, to, yo, we need to take thumbnail photos, brother. All right, yo, Chad, I'm just going to have a work conversation with Miguel real quick because I was, I was sitting on the pot this morning. I'm like, you know, McGowan's been doing a great job, but I, I, I kind of have this guy sitting on an island. Him and I need to be on the phone more often and talk about shit. What I've been doing is basically streaming like 8 to 10 hours a day, except for the last couple of days, clearly. But then after that, I'm, I'm going to spend time with Gracie and, and Haley, and I don't get much work done beyond that. But I need to be better about... I've got a full-time employee now with McGowan. I need to check in with this guy often, and we need to sit down and really break this fucking social media and YouTube channel down to a science. Uh, yo, McGowan, I've got uh, two shoots this week that are really, really important. I'm going to give you the rundown of both of those privately because I can't share that with the chat, but legitimately might be the biggest moment in my career. And I'm not exaggerating. So, yo, McGowan, I'm going to have, we're going to have boots on the ground, brother. I need you to get over here. We'll talk about it. I'm either going to have you come early Wednesday morning where I'm going to have you come Tuesday afternoon after the stream to get all the camera equipment ready. I want to get the road mics, uh, the Bluetooth mics set up. 
I'm going to get you suited and booted with this cage in the FX3. And I need you shooting for me because we're going to get these vlogs and the day in the life's out for the YouTube channel. Uh, we also write, write a list down, McGowan. On top of that, we need to take thumbnail photos, brother. I know you threw together that thumbnail for me yesterday. I hate these old thumbnail fucking stills we use. Like, we need to get new updated thumbnail photos. Um, I still, man, I hate the, I don't know if the YouTube meta has changed. I hope it changes because I hate these fucking YouTube thumbnails, bro. <gasps> I can't stand it. There's got to be a better way, bro. There's, chat, I don't care if the Discord does it, the, na the neighborhood or the cum shot Discord does it. We got to find like a bread and butter, like, thumbnail theme that's not the mouth open like oh my god my dick is so small i can't believe it you know i just can't do it i can't do it but we'll find a way uh jake Matt, yeah, I, my, the thing is for me back in the day on youtube it was a simple it was a simple game really very simple you take an unopened uh cardboard box and you make that the thumbnail everybody wants to know what's inside the fucking box that was a great time on YouTube where I didn't have to sit here and actually think about my title and thumbnail. It was just, hey, what's in the fucking box? Isn't that just clickbait? I mean, it really wasn't clickbait. I was definitely, like, going to show people what was in the box. Those People don't know what clickbait is. Like, I've done a couple, like, cold-blooded clickbaits. Like, when um, I had the thumbnail where I was putting my hand over Haley's belly a long time back at the old content house and basically made it sound like she was pregnant. She wasn't pregnant at all. We just got another, we got another dog. I would say that's 50% clickbait. I said, our family is growing by one or something. And then I put my hand on her. So that was clickbait for sure. But the fucking cardboard boxes were not clickbait. Those were just unboxings. I actually did those. Lord Bacon, brother. It was so good to see you. My Twitter mentions yesterday, brother. Thank you so much for the five gifted. And thanks for cooking up this breakfast bacon for the boys in the chat. Jake Maverick, thank you very much for the prime, brother. How you fucking doing, man? Good to see you. Desert Eagle. I miss that COD 4 Desert Eagle all the time. And Glazed Human. When I think of Glazed Human, I just think of a nice Krispy Kreme donut. I can't believe they're about to put Krispy Kreme donuts in every single McDonald's next year. I feel like that's really dangerous. That's really... I mean, these, these, these Krispy Kremes... I'm not going to lie to you. They got the better of my wife in the tr third trimester cravings that women get during the pregnancy. We were ordering like Krispy Kreme donuts once, once a month. It was fucking awesome. I told my wife yesterday, first of all, you guys would be very proud. We were laying in bed uh, two nights ago and we had the giggles. We, were having a, we had a great night after um, uh, the UFC fights and everything. And my wife, I'm not even kidding, in like a very high-pitched like Mickey Mouse like feminine voice said, ah! Oh, pass i was like brother i almost i almost pissed my pants laughing i'm like honey I, I know why i married you it's the cutest thing i've ever heard um but fuck i lost my flow yeah mcgowan okay so we got the thumbnails we're gonna retake those photos we gotta get you set up ready to go because i need you shooting we're gonna make a vlog and then uh i think that's it mcgowan I think that's it. Yeah, W wife. No, Haley's uh Haley had a long Gracie right now is going through sleep progression. It's not progression. Fuck that. She's regressing. Apparently, when babies hit like four months, there's a period of time where they basically regress all of the things that we were doing well, which is her sleep schedule. You know, Haley's got Gracie on a great routine. We'll do bath time at like seven o'clock her final feeding is right after and then she goes down to sleep and babies you know can sleep like 12 hours straight honestly uh unless they wet their diaper and then they got to get changed whatever but gracie's been doing great with her sleep but the last two days she's been tough i think she's got a tooth coming in yeah it's a whole fucking thing brother and what's great is that my wife throughout the night lets me sleep because she knows that i gotta have high energy for these streams but then I wake up and I have anxiety about how fucking tired Haley is. It's a whole thing. But we're hoping that Gracie gets better. Uh, but yeah, the Masters are over, gentlemen. What did we think overall about the Masters? Um, I'm going to actually, I, I'm going to tell you guys exactly how I feel about this. So 
now that I'm older and paying much more attention to uh, the PGA live competitive golf in general, I feel like I missed out on so many great viewing opportunities like in my teenage years. Because I liked golf then, but I didn't love golf. Like, I wasn't playing it as, as often as I am now. And so I just wasn't paying as much attention, I would say, to, like, the majors and the big tournaments and the, the signature events. And so the last couple of years, I've been locked in. You know, I've been watching a lot of PGA. I've been watching and keeping up with all these golfers. And uh, these majors are just fucking incredible. The Masters is by far and away the best tournament of golf. This was essentially our Super Bowl if you don't watch golf. And... Fuck, man. We start the tournament off. Bryson DeChambeau, what? I think he went six or seven under after the round one. I can't tell. I, 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 think, I think he got to play his front nine before the wind really picked up. Because that's the only tough part about Augusta. And I guess it happens often. I mean, I've seen the footage. I've seen the, the events. The weather. I mean, what was it? Last year or two years ago, they had trees coming down, falling down, literally almost hit patrons at the damn tournament. But the first two days were a little rough, man. Like, the greens were just sliding like glass. There was gusts of wind, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. So, I don't know. I, I, I like watching these the best players in the world fight conditions like that. But at the same time, like, I was hoping for some shootouts. You know what I mean? Where the distance is dialed. You know, the only thing that's going to fuck you up is a mistake that you make. Not a mistake that you make by having the wrong club because the wind is just like, you can't read it. It's You're just fucking guessing at a certain point. Patio, thank you very much for the sub. Chaser, Fallen, Woody, gentlemen, thank you guys all so much for the subs. You think it's possible that right now you're a better golfer than Jordan Spieth? Man, I hope Jordan finds it, brother, because I, I, I think uh, golf is a lot more exciting when Jordan's in the hunt. But yeah, the first two days were a little tough because of the wind and the conditions, but still fun to watch nonetheless. And then Saturday and Sunday, man, I, I truly can't believe that we went into Sunday with like Max Homa, DeChambeau, Auberg, or however the fuck you pronounce it, Lud Ludwig Auberg, Auberge, Auberge. I always forget how to say his name. Whatever. That guy's going to be a fucking monster, though, let me tell you. His first major ever runner up, Aubert. Ah, I fucking heard this all throughout the broadcast, but whatever reason, my mind just can't remember shit like that. Ober, Ober, but this guy's a this guy's a tank. I mean, this guy looks like he was chiseled out of marble. But the last two days were great, man. I mean, I was really hoping that what I think after like the at some point on the front nine, we had a four way tie. And then Scotty just took over. Scotty started doing Scotty Scheffler things. I mean, the only way Scotty was losing golf tournaments is because his putter was just not working. I mean, this guy was missing like three, four footers for par. And in the last, in the last month and a half, this guy has sorted out all those problems. And he, he just looks unbeatable, man. It is crazy how... This guy just doesn't make mistakes, man. And, and, and you know what? He looks like he's fucking wailing on the ball with every swing he takes. He really does. It, it's, fu it's funny. It's like I hear these, uh, the commentators, when they do the slow-mos of his footwork and his right, his right fucking leg is flying back, then flying forward. And then even after Scotty's finished with his entire swing, bro, he'll like search for the ground with his right foot just to put it up on his toes to have that picturesque golf finish but man his ball striking is just like probably one of the best ball strikers since tiger woods i mean it's 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 unbelievable what scotty has been able to do in the last few years but i was really really hoping that max homa and dechambeau could keep up i still i'm bummed for max homa i think that t shot on 12 the par three you know he definitely had I don't even know if he had too much club, but he hit the green and that ball just jumped five fucking feet forward into those bushes. And you've seen players hit it up into that mulch and it'll roll down, but it got trapped in that bush. And 
tried to get the wedge up and stayed on the fringe and walked out of there with a double bogey. I mean, the only hope there is he comes out of there with a with a bogey or a par if he could have chipped in, but that's an, that's a really tough shot. I feel like that the tournament was kind of wrapped up right there. I was hoping that we'd get some magic on 13 and what is it? The par fives are... Was it 11 and 14 are the par fives? 15. 13 and 15. I have those backwards. I love that dog leg left where these motherfuckers are just fu like slinging drawn in irons. They got like 230, 240 yards, 220, depending on how far they hit the drive, 190. I, I think I saw Bryson hit a seven iron from the molt. She was like 190 out. I mean, that hole is so much fun. That's why the back nine at Augusta is just unbelievable because there's so many opportunities for these guys to fuck up, but there's so many opportunities for them to capitalize on what's happening. You know what I mean? Those two par fives, you really have some chances if you can put the ball in the right positions. You know, we saw, what was it, back in 2019, Molinari going to the drink, and Brooks Kepka, I think it was, on uh, number 12. Tony Finau did the same thing. I mean, I was just hoping for a little bit more drama, I would say. We didn't get it. I was still happy that Scotty Scheffler won, but, man, it would have been awesome to see, like, Morikawa, DeChambeau, Auberge. I, fuck. Dude, is it, is it, oh, is it Oberg? Auberg? I can I can't remember. Give me the full pronunciation. Do I is the G a J or a G? Oberg. Can I just say Oberg? That's it. Oberg. Lud Ludwig Oberg. Is that it? Am I the, am I good there? Oberg. I gotta learn it. Oberg. Just had my best golf lesson today. There you go, Dad. My dad actually, uh, he never had time to play consistent golf when I was growing up because he was working 24-7. But now that he's retired and living in Florida, he's been taking lessons. He seems pretty hyped up and excited about his swing. Started logging scores like he's a projected like 16 handicap right now. Pretty damn good. But, you know, my dad's got a lot of things working against him. And there's a lot of jokes I can make there. But physically, I mean, he's like... Tore his rotator cuff, had to get surgery. The guy's got no cartilage left in his knees. I mean, Dad, the fact that you're, you know, in the 90s right now, I bet you get down in the 80s with these lessons you're taking with the way that your body is just beat up from all the hard work you put in. It's pretty impressive. And I'm only being nice to you right now because... I don't know why I'm being nice to you, but I actually am happy for you. Yo, McBain, what up, baby? Thanks for the tier one, brother. Grant Smith, thanks for the tier one. Risky, Paddle Ice, Tigra, good to see you, brother. Chubb and Love, Mr. Trev Z, Saucy Panther, Thug Muffin, Tommy Dubs, Tad Paul, great to see you, brother. Shot a 93 yesterday for the third time in a row. Say a prayer for my mental. I love that, brother. I love that. No, 93 is not bad. We'll take it. It's kind of where I'm at right now, too, but I did... uh. I got some more stuff to talk about with golf, so settle in, gentlemen. I got lots of yapping to do. And I don't want to hear anybody complain about yapping. I don't want to hear anybody complain about, yo, Scump just got on, get in the Discord. I got to get a good yapping session in here. Want a 48 sub train? Life is good right now. Freeze pops, patio, chaser, once again, thank you. Stop golf and talk about 300. What's 300? All right, gentlemen, so I went out. We obviously, we had this conversation. These guys changed up my grip. Club feels a little bit more. My fingers on my left hand gave me more opportunity to turn these wrists over. Oh, UFC 300. Holy shit, yeah. Well, look, brother, I'm definitely not going to be your guy to talk about the UFC. I'm a novice. I watch the big fights, the big cards. That's about it. I really do not know much about mixed martial arts, man. I mean, I've been watching the UFC forever, but again, I really only watch, like, the show stopping cards. But... I think I had an out-of-body experience when I watched Max Holloway. I, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, this guy literally, the fight was over, bro. He won. And he just decides to square up with this guy who just wouldn't get knocked the fuck out. I mean, he broke his nose. He, he I'm pretty sure that guy walked out of there with a detached retina. You know, Max, I don't think he meant to... 
put his fingers in his eye sockets, but it happened on accident. I I, I just my jaw was on the floor. I, I I'm a pussy, bro. If I knew that I was winning on the cards with the judges, there is no way that I'm I, who I've now basically killed this man and he's still walking, still sending haymakers my way. And he says in the last 10 seconds, fuck it, brother. Let's let's have it out. I'll give you a shot. I'll give you a chance. I said, don't cry. You're going to have an opportunity. These guys start slugging it out. And then he knocks him out. And the way this guy's body drops, I mean, this guy, this has to be like the fight of the century. I've never seen anything like it. And I know Max has done that before in his fights. Just But, but for, the, for the situation, UFC 300, the fight is over, bro. It's tied up with a bow on it. I can't believe it, man. I mean, that was... I, I don't know if we'll ever see something as crazy as what we saw in that fight. I, I'm, I'm mind blown. I really am. So that, that was an unbelievable card. The only thing that I will say for the, for, for the last fight of the night, my wife, uh, she was exhausted from Gracie all day. She's like, honey, can we watch this in bed? I'm like, damn it. Because right, we got a new couch a couple months back. I love this couch. And we brought our, instead of sleeping in the, in, the, in the master bedroom, we wanted to sleep in the bedroom that was next to Gracie's uh, just because she'd been fussy with her sleep aggression and her teeth coming in. And so we brought our pillows down onto the couch. We had a nice little pit, blankets, pillows. We're watching the fights. My wife's like, honey, can we watch the last fight in bed? I'm like, but honey, we got, we got like a damn pillow fort on the couch. The dogs are sleeping. I mean, it was just a beautiful sight, full-blown comfort. But she likes to fall asleep in bed. I'm, I'm a couch sleeper. I slept on my couch in my old apartment that I had when I first moved to L.A. pretty much for like six months straight. I didn't even use the bed. I don't know why. I just like falling asleep on the couch. Something peaceful about it. But she doesn't like that. So we go into the bedroom. I turn the fights on. Bro, the two Chinese women fight, eh, it was okay. It wasn't bad, but it was the most entertaining. Final fight. They're doing the promos, the trailers, and the walkouts start, and I drift off to sleep. I wake up when they finally get in the octagon. We got Bruce Buffer, whoever, whatever the fuck is. I always forget his name. Uh, doing the announcements. You know what I mean? And then, bro, I'm like, all right, I fell asleep. I woke up. I'm ready to go. I'm like, you can't fall asleep again. You can't fall asleep again. No bullshit, I wake up 30 minutes later. I, like It was truly like I blinked. I wake up to my wife saying, oh my God. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, wait, have you been sleeping this whole time? I'm like, aren't you supposed to be asleep? You were asleep. You fell asleep before me. The fight was over. They were putting the belt back on this guy. I literally, I literally, it was, it, it was truly like I lost 30 minutes. Of my, I thought I just blinked and I woke up. I, lo I, I, forget, I, I didn't get to see the, the entire fight. I was so fucking annoyed. I'm like, dude. Oh, all good. But yeah, I mean, UFC 300 was an unbelievable card. Noodlehead, thank you so much for the prime. Appreciate you, brother. X hurts, thin air. Appreciate you guys. All right, but boys, real quick, we got to get back to golf. I'm sorry. We're going back to golf discussion because a lot has happened that has coincided with the Masters weekend. I played golf on... Um, I played golf Saturday morning. Okay, gentlemen. We went out to a course called Oak Quarry. It's in Riverside. It's a beautiful course. It's a drive. It's a hike, man. It's usually like 50 minutes, no traffic in the morning when we get when we get on the road at 6 a.m. It's like an hour, 20 minutes back, bro. It's the only thing that I hate about living in LA. You don't if you don't belong to a private club, which is really expensive, really hard to do out here. Like to play golf, no matter what, it's like a 40 minute to an hour long drive. Regardless of that, I don't mind. The drive, we carpool, the boys catch up, we talk about life, crack jokes, it's awesome. I actually, sometimes I look forward to the drive just as much as I look forward to golf. On the way back, though, when you don't have a good round, it's kind of tough to stomach. And let me say this, a lot happened on Saturday. So, we get my grip changed. I took a, a lesson last week, first one that I've had since the back injury. First, first lesson in six months. Spent the entire time working on the grip. The grip gave me a lot of optimism. It really brought my club head speed up, the ball speed. I was clipping this damn thing. I was really pinching it, getting that compression. 
So I was feeling great about Saturday. I was telling my wife in bed the night before. I, I FaceTimed my buddy who I was golfing with on Saturday the night before. I'm like, yo, guys, this might actually be it. I finally found the fucking answer to all my problems. And let me say this. First three holes, it certainly was, bro. You know how, like, I'm not sure if you guys have ever worked on distance because, like, that's something that I've always been chasing. And it's always nice when you play a course that you've played a lot and where your ball ends up after the first tee shot after a drive. I'm like, yo, I'm 20, 30 yards further than I've ever been on this hole. It was fucking incredible, boys. I mean, the first three holes were magic. I was like, I had a 60-yard shot on the first hole for my approach. I take out my 60-degree. I blast this thing 10 yards over the fucking green. I get out of there for a bogey. Not bad. Second hole, I, bl I, I hit my three hybrid, like 225 yards. Second shot, good. Two putt par. Third hole, I swear to I shit you not, I end up 40 yards further than I've ever been on this goddamn thing. And I almost chipped in for birdie. Bro, I was like 30 yards behind the green. It was only 270 to, get to, to carry the bunkers to get onto the green. I put it 30 yards past. I, I, I rolled out. I definitely didn't carry it 290 or 300 or whatever I'm saying. But I hit an unbelievable wedge. I'm two feet from the cup, birdie. So I just went bogey, par birdie. I'm, I'm like, this is, is going to be the best round that I've had in a long time. And then, man, this is the last hole that I'm going to go shot by, for shot with you guys. Because this one, you won't even believe me if I told you. And I've got the, I put these Arcos sensors on the end of my clubs. You, could, you put them on the entire bag. And then you keep your phone in your front pocket. And it can GPS track like all your yardage, your distance. And you can track the entire round. You know, greens and regulation, fairways and regulate everything. So you just have more data in the future to influence like your decisions and what clubs you use, depending on the yards you have for each shot. It's nice. I mean, I'm not really a data-driven guy. I'm, I'm certainly a field guy, but since I've been finding more distance um, with these changes I've been making, you know, it's kind of nice to have the data because I don't know what my true yardage is on a lot of these clubs. But so it's a par five, and it's gettable in two if you hit a good tee shot. I'm still on the tee box fucking with this grip. It still doesn't feel comfortable. I'm trying to hook it into these three fingers and really feel it in the fingers rather than the palm. Because the problem is I'll get it in the fingers and I'll wrap the palm over the fucking club or, the, you know, the butt of the club, the grip, and I'll have like a really strong grip, which is fine, but it'll end up in the palm. And really, you're supposed to just be here on the padding right here with your three fingers. Great. So I'm sitting on the tee box just feeling uncomfortable over the ball in this fourth hole. I crank the driver, but I block it out right. It goes straight out of bounds. And my, my buddy and I, who I was telling you I was on the way to the course with, carpooling, um, him and I were really playing straight up today because my handicap has gotten lower than it should be, especially now that I've gone through some swing changes. My game has definitely regressed. I'm like, bro, I got to get my handicap back up because I'm going to play in these like rec tournaments and having a low handicap when you're not playing to that handicap is just fucking terrible, bro. I'm like... I should be getting like 13, 14. I, I don't feel like a single digit handicap right now. So I'm logging every single shot, bro. If I go out of bounds and my fucking point of entry, I'm not taking a lateral drop, bro. I'm just going to fucking re tee because this shit was straight out of bounds. So I re tee, get my grip right, hit a great drive. Nice little draw down the fucking, I hit this thing 280. Probably carried like 255, rolled out. It was great. Second shot in, I got 220. A little downhill. I take out my four, high, my four iron. I damn near shanked this fucking ball. I was on a downhill lie. I think I just did a lot of things wrong. I shanked this thing right. I'm on the par three of the next hole in the rough, but I found the ball. I got a shot in at the green. It's 130 yards. I'm like, fuck, bro. I don't know if I'm going to get the distance that I want. So I take out my nine iron, hit like a half knockdown shot. This thing, I get a flyer out of the rough. I end up in these pot bunkers behind the green. I mean, I'm just like, holy fuck, bro. I'm about to get a quad here. There's just no way. I'm already, what? So, I hit, so I'm hitting three out of the fairway, shanked four iron, that's four. Hit all, I, I'm, I'm in this bunker, and I, I can't even see the pin from down there uh, for par. I'm like, this is fucked. This whole round is fucked. I take out my 60 degree, no bullshit. 
I think I hit the best bunker shot of my life. This thing just barely gets over this lip of the bunker. And everybody on the green who's like waiting to putt, they're just losing their minds like, go in, go in, go in. Fucking drop it. Couldn't believe it, bro. And I actually think that was, I ended up being a bogey. So wait, hit three off the tee for the drop for the, my nine iron was the fifth shot. So I get a bogey. I, 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 I'm bummed because I didn't even get to see the ball go in the hole. Last, that was the last hole I was going to break down for you shot for shot just because I, you know, I don't really hold out from the bunkers too often, which is really nice. After that, boys, I'm not going to lie to you. The game was all over the place. When I was making good, when I, when I was in the center of the face, my distance was there. But man, with this new grip, bro, I chunked a lot of wedges. I just made a lot of unforced errors. But, you know, I was trying not to be disappointed because I ended up shooting a 92. But that's because the back nine, bro, I just had, I had like four or five double bogeys, bro. Just losing balls out of bounds. I, you know, so listen, my game has certainly gotten worse than it was before the injury. But I'm optimistic that I'm going to find it. Um, I'll tell you what yesterday morning was actually super peaceful because I sat on the couch first of all the CBS broadcast as soon as it started up for me at 11 a.m. local time I was just fucking annoyed brother because I'm using the masters app on my Apple TV which is fine but when you're on web or you're on your phone you could do uh, feature groups plus and you can basically like make your own group but when it finally came time for the last three groups to tee off Bro, I could not go anywhere on any of these apps unless I got my laptop out to find all the players and shots that I wanted to see. I'm like, yo, how the fuck? And my blood's kind of like, I, I'm actually like pissed off at CBS. How the fuck are you not going to show me Max Homa, who's in the second to last group? How are you not going to show me his tee shot on number one or number two? Like, I don't want to see you, Jim Nance, I fucking love you, brother, but I don't want to see you guys sitting in this fucking room talking with music playing in the background, bro. Show me every single fucking shot from the last three groups on the main broadcast. I don't understand. Why? So I'm going back and forth between fucking Peacock, goddamn YouTube TV, the Masters app. I'm like, yo, can you guys just show me what I want to see? But the only positive about not seeing all the things that I was looking for is I actually bought two books. It's going to sound insane, okay? Settle in, man, because I'm doing a lot of... Oh, I just spilled my juvie. Hold on, chat. Uh, settle in, because I'm doing a lot of golf yapping. Can, you can read? I can read. Uh, not well, but... No, nah, I'm actually a pretty good reader, all jokes aside. But hold on. Before I really get deep in here, Daystro gifted my dad a sub. You're a good man, Daystro. Geo Snags, Fireman FPS, Loco, Visually, Just the Temp, LOL Borg, Straight Cooked, Hawkeye. Guys, thank you so much for all the subs. You guys are coming out different today. Thank you, gentlemen, for the subs. All right. So, let me say this. And this is why I want to continue to talk about golf. Check the donos. I got you, bro. Hold on. Wax my crankshaft ass. I crank. Wax my crankshaft with a $20 that, or Matt, today's my birthday. Can I? Yo, Wax. First of all, brother, it's my birthday, bro. You could have hit me with a reminder with like a $3 dono. You did not have to drop 20 in my bucket. But the fact that you just dropped me 20 on your birthday is actually unbelievable, man. Happy fucking birthday. Chat, can we get a happy birthday my boy Wax my crankshaft? This guy just brings the vibes in the chat. I hope you have the best day, brother. Thank you so much for stopping in and sharing your day with us, gentlemen. Let me get a W. Happy birthday to Wax My Crankshaft. Smoking dicks. All right. This guy donated $20, $10, 10 minutes, 26 minutes ago. I hope you're still here. His username is literally smoking. And then he put in his dono message, quotes, dicks. Smoking dicks. Brother, I hope you're a fucking sub in this stream, man, because you just get me. You just get us. That's that's great comms out of you, brother, with the don't know message. Smoking dicks. Thanks for the 10. All right. Yo, Diesel. Five gifted, brother. That Diesel dick is, is, is stroking this chat right now. Five gifted. Thank you so much. Okay. 
All right, Chet, you, you're not even going to believe how much I can yap about golf, so settle in. If you don't want to be here for golf talk, you should leave now. I'm just letting you know. All right, Chet, you're going to be my therapy. And I'm going to give you honest, full transparency. So, I don't know if it's because... I don't know if it's because I never had lessons growing up. My dad did the best he could to teach me how to play golf. But again, we didn't have the same resources as we have today. You know, I, it's, it's crazy to think that I have all of YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram at the palm of my hand now to have all these great golf instructors pass along information and really teach people how to play golf. And then I end up sitting on the couch yesterday, and I'm not kidding, I read two books. I read two, like, starter pack books. Five Swing Thoughts from Ben Hogan, I think it was, and another book. I'll get you guys the names. But the reason why I bring up, like, literature, is be and the reason why I bring up the fact that I didn't have golf lessons growing up is that I actually think there's... When you see a professional golfer hit a shot, like, let's take Scotty Scheffler, for instance. Any, any fucking professional, any golfer that looks like they know what they're doing, you know, it looks so easy. It looks effortless for them. And, of course, that's because of years and years in practice. But a lot of times I feel like since I didn't grow up learning how to play the game properly, because it, it really it doesn't look like an athletic motion, but it is. You know, it's like... You're coiling up your body. You're using the ground to create all this energy. And then it's like this centrifugal force of taking all the energy that you have now put into your body and you're uncoiling and, and just sending all this energy from the ground up through your body, down through your arms, down through your hands, down the club, and just getting this club head to whip through impact. And... I think because I never learned properly how to generate this power. Not only does my golf swing, it's never looked fundamentally sound. It's never looked good. But even then, brother, it's almost like I was pretending to swing. Like I was just doing things with my body and my arms that look like somebody else's like a good proper golf swing. But I was never creating any of this energy. I was never creating any of this force and this speed and this momentum, right? And so the biggest frustration that I've had with golf is that I spent a couple months really finally taking lessons with, with my guy, Nick, who became one of my really good friends over that time. But the problem is I, I think we became such good friends that I started to dictate like what we would work on in our lessons because, you know, we'd get done with like a 45 minute session and it would pass us right by. It'd be here today, gone tomorrow. I mean, these 45 minutes would go by like the UFC fight I watched the other night. I fell asleep, I woke up, it was over. And we would get towards the end of the session and we'd be accomplishing the goal that we came in to fix. Club head speed would go up, ball speed would go up, Nice draw right down the middle. I'm thinking like, oh my God, okay, we finally made progress. And then I'd come in for my next session and it would take us like 30 minutes of those 45 minutes just for me to get to hit the ball the same way I was hitting it at the last lesson. And I would try to go to the range and practice these things. But when you're at the range, unless you're like filming every shot and then watching it back or unless this guy is here with me at the range, I felt like I was still like in the dark navigating without knowing if I'm doing this right or if I'm doing it wrong. It's like my body can never remember what the fuck we just reinforced in this lesson. So I felt like I was just in a revolving door. I would get better for 30 minutes and then I can never take it off out of the practice session onto the course with me. And this went on for a while, right? And so... I was so optimistic about my golf round on Saturday with this grip being changed and really feeling, you know, this skipping stone sensation through impact and really throwing the club. And then this day just didn't go as well as I had hoped. And so I'm on the car ride home and I'm just feeling fucking down. I'm like, there is something wrong with the understanding that I have of the golf swing. Like, I, I, I don't think that I ever built the right foundation 
And so my swing is so inconsistent. Like I can have rounds where I play well because my arms are disconnected from my body. I'm getting sucked back behind me. And sometimes I get the timing right and I can string together a good round of golf, but it's really just like luck at that point. And I've realized that I just need to start from the fundamentals, the ground up, because I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like I can't, not one single swing is the same. It is, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm just fucking timing things up and getting lucky when I play good golf. So I'm like, dude, what can I do? It's hard to find a golf coach and it's hard to find the right time to actually work on these things. Like I need to figure this out on my own. So yesterday morning, I, I buy these two books on my iPhone on like the books app, which I've never used on, 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 on my iPhone. And I sit here the first four hours from like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. until this coverage for the Masters really started. And man, it was pretty fucking insightful. Like this guy wrote this book in the fucking 80s. And I'm not even kidding, like actually taking the time to read it page by page. The golf swing to me now makes more sense than it ever has in my entire life. And I'm not sitting there saying that I'm going to go out and be the best golfer in the world. That's not it, because it's really going to take weeks and months of practice of like these key fundamental thoughts and feelings to like get my body retrained because I have so many bad habits but let me tell you, brother, I actually legitimately, for anybody that wants to learn golf, like I almost want to like send you this book. It's starting to make so much sense, and I'm going to tell you why, okay? So, we're at address. I actually think when I address the ball, I'm in a pretty good position. I feel athletic, okay? And here are the things that made sense to me. So, we're standing over the ball. I got the club in my hand. A lot of times I have a really, 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 I throttle the club. Like, I grip the fuck out of this goddamn thing, which is not where you want to be. Okay? Whatever. Besides that. So I read this book. And for me, I think I'm a big feel guy. I'm a, I'm a big swing thought guy. And... Here are the three things that really made a lot of sense. He, he talks about it like a lighthouse drill. You, you guys see a lighthouse, the beam of light. It just rotates back and forth, back and forth. Okay? This is like the basic arc of the swing. Do I have a club in here? I don't think I do. But here. Doesn't matter. We don't need the club. It's really about my weight and what I want to feel going into these next couple clubs or next couple sessions that I have. So my weight and this lighthouse motion, if we just think about the swing like this, think about the swing like this. For the backswing and the weight transfer, talked about the right knee, right hip, and left shoulder, okay? So we're turning this left shoulder and we're keeping our center mass the top of our spine, think about the base of your neck, the top of your spine. This thing is not going to fucking move at all. Imagine this juvie can, imagine my back was wrapped around it and this is my spine. We're staying here and we're getting this left shoulder while keeping the weight on the inside of our right foot. And I'm pushing this weight back on my right hip. My right hip is coming towards my spine, but my spine is staying here. I know this sounds like a lot of swing thoughts, but I'm just trying to explain it to you. The only thing that I'm feeling here this entire time is my right knee and this, my left shoulder and the weight staying on the inside of my foot. And here's the problem that I've always had with the weight transfer and the downswing. For me, if I want to get this weight over to my left, I have to feel like I'm stepping on the ground. I have to feel like I'm stepping down onto the ground. And this is what's going to allow me to, as I'm getting to impact, to swing up and feel like I'm fucking jumping, which is wh really where you get that whip, right? But I've always had trouble getting over to my left, and what happens when I get my weight over to my left is that I move my hips forward, and there you want a little hip bump, people say, but that, that causes me to get over to my left, and then I just turn everything out, everything's out of sync, there's no fucking rhythm. But with this book 
And this is what I talk about swing thoughts and feel. When I'm getting over now, what they said in this book is to feel your right knee go towards the ball. And no bullshit, almost instantly when I went out on my hitting mat, because since this right knee goes forward towards the ball, it forces your weight. It kind of squares up your hips and your entire body, which lets the club drop into the slot. Right knee goes forward a little bit. That gets you over to your left. And then keeping my weight on the left, you know, like in the middle of my foot, not letting the weight get all the way over to the left, but keeping it center, just turning through. Man, I'm, I'm fired up, bro. This probably isn't that interesting for you guys. Overcomplicating it, not a long-term solution. Yo, listen, yo, Jay Wizzy, I know that shit. Listen to me. I know that shit sounded complicated, but I was trying to explain it for people that don't really play golf. For people that do play golf, trust me, bro. It didn't feel complicated in my head. It was really just get this left shoulder over to my right knee, keeping my center, and then just letting the downswing trigger the downswing trigger is just my right knee going towards the ball, which was allowing me to actually feel like I'm in my left without moving off the ball, making a fucking mistake. So it feels really, really good. And I was on my mat yesterday, and when I brought up the lighthouse shit, listen, I can't explain all this, but the point is, the point is, instead of jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing and having just like these band-aid fixes for my swing is that I'm trying to rebuild from the ground up my entire perception of a golf swing because if I can just get my lower body if I can get my lower body and these swing thoughts of the left shoulder to the right knee for my back swing and then this this little fucking release of my right knee towards the ball that lets me get over to the left, if I can just do the that one thing with every swing until it's... Hold on. I got this cord trapped in my fucking chair. My point... I'm just trying to find... I'm trying to put the foundation down. I'm going to just drill this over and over and over and over again, and I'm not going to let my mind wander onto what's next until I can do that every time. If I can just build the consistency of my lower body, I'll, I'll be able to figure everything else out. Because I've just never had a solid base. Every swing is fucking different. And I, I shit you not. Here, yeah, listen. For anybody that's interested, because I can't explain this shit as, as well as I'd like to, but there, why I was so excited to talk about it is because this book legitimately like helped me put myself in a position where I was just feeling so frustrated that I don't actually know what the fuck I'm doing. The, the book is called, uh, it's from Michael McTeague, The Keys to the Effortless Golf Swing, Curing Your Hit Impulse in Seven Simple Lessons. Bro. And that sentence alone right there, like even in this book, he's like, everybody has a hit impulse because he's right, bro. No matter how many things I feel like I fix... I, I'd get out to the course. I'd never be able to translate anything from the range to the course. And it's this, this hit impulse where everybody thinks like we're trying to hit the ball, which, which we are, but we're not at the same time. Like the entire, the, the ball is just one step to the golf swing. And I would always just get to the top of my backswing, tense everything fucking up and just try to hit the ball. When really, we're just trying to nice create all this momentum and a nice swing through. So, if you guys are really interested, um, like, like even in this book, when he talks about this hit impulse, he's like, yo, I want you to do all these things we just talked about in these chapters, and I want you to hum throughout your entire swing. And if, you, if, if that, hint, that hit impulse creeps back into your mind, you're not going to be able to hum with a consistent cadence. You're going to grunt it's going to be interrupted. You're going <clears> to, <throat> you know what I mean? So I'm sitting there just humming. Mm, I fucking love it. What's the book here? Uh, it's called, somebody can link it. Maybe McGowan can. 
The keys to the effortless golf swing, curing your hit impulse in seven simple lessons. And this author did like an unbelievable job of explaining these concepts in a way that are actually digestible. Like I've read like golf literature where it's just so overly complicated, but this guy, it's just like this book was written for me, the way he explains things. And it's like the first time where I've, I felt like I ac actually understood the golf swing rather than pretending that I understand it. So I'm pretty fired up, man. The only reason why I'm kind of bummed, I woke up a little bummed this morning, is that my back has hurt more for the first time than it has in a very long time. And I'm like, dude, ah, I can't sit here for another month and a half, two months not playing golf or I'm going to lose my mind. Try changing your bed. It's not the bed, unfortunately. All right, we got a lot of subs in that yapping session during the... Uh, Prada vest, yeah, my wife got this for me for Christmas, and I never wear it. I felt bad. I'm like, I feel like I've moved past, like, that designer luxury, like, impulse that I, I'm like, oh, I want people to know I'm successful, whatever. I want nice things. I don't really give a fuck about that anymore, but this vest is just nice, and my wife got it for me as a gift, and I've only worn it once, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to get on today. I'm going to wear it. Campbell, I love you, brother. Thank you so much for the five gifted, man. I really do appreciate it. You know what I could do, chat? You know what I actually think would be really cool? I don't know if people would enjoy it as much as I hope they would, but I would love it. It's with this setup that I have in the backyard with the mat and the net. I actually think it would be really cool for me to set up a camera and live stream like a practice session. I got to figure that out. Yo, Campbell with the five gifted brother. You're the fucking man, Campbell. Always. Monksy Magic, 2,000 bits. Are we serious right now, brother? Are we serious? Dude, take a day trip down to Carlsbad, California, meet up with the boys at Callaway. Shit, I need to. Uh, I sent a bunch of fucking product to Minwoo Lee. Oh, my God, I forgot. Yo, we got to talk about golf because I did something really fucking stupid, chat. I did some... I, 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 you want to talk about impulse. I did, I, I did something really stupid, and you guys are going to be... You guys are going to laugh at me, and I don't care. But truly, probably the most exciting part of this entire conversation. Yo, Mozzie, five gifted is insane out of you. Mozzie, thank you so much for the five gifted. You're the man, brother. Uh, yo, Monksy, once again, thank you so much for the 2,000 bits. We sent Pokemon gear to Minwoo Lee, and he gave me a connect at Callaway. He's like, 